Hello, this is Celine Lau. You just can call me Celine, and I'm a digital animation student in the One Academy, and this is the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number ninety-seven. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good evening, Norman. Hey, Dan. How are you? I'm um, okay. I've not been having some good luck recently, but I think I'll be fine. Who needs luck? We make our own. Oh, when you're me, okay, I think you'll be counting on a lot of luck. But anyway, our guest for today is a local Malaysian artist who I've met at Comic Fiesta last year, a few weeks ago. But we really won't be timey by me. But anyway, Celine Lowe, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you, Norman. It's a pleasure to be here. And you too, Daniel. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. So, how was your day? How was your day? Um, Just the usual, nothing exciting, like just... Well, typical day goes, I guess. Just wake up, do your about. I mean, do your daily stuff, and things normal people do, I guess. <laughs> the lazy Sunday, huh? Yeah, the lazy Sunday. You, you guys are awesome because you have lazy Sundays here in Johor. We don't have that anymore, and probably by now you're probably yeah, wondering. Yeah, I know what's why. Going on. Yeah, yeah. So for the rest of the world who don't know, the Sultan of Johor decided to make. Sunday, a working day. So instead of Monday being the start of the week, it's Sunday now. So, yay. Oh, but, <laughs> but they have oh. Friday off. Yeah. Oh. No, Friday is half day. So everything is just pushed back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. It's... I thought it was Friday and Saturday your weekends will be instead of no, Saturday, no, no, no. Sunday. It's, it's like this. Like Friday is going to be your half day. And Saturday is going to be your off day. So it's... I don't know. But uh, let's just roll with it because... No, no, no. no. You roll with it. We're fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you big meanie. But anyway, before we move on with the show, we need to ask you, Celine, the four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite character? Um, For me, that's quite a hard decision to make. Most I'm kind of tied with Princess Luna and Princess Celestia. I quite like them both equally, actually. There's, like, no favorites <laughs> among both of them. Those two are okay. Those two are awesome. Yeah, don't worry. We allow multiple choice. Yeah, so Luna and uh, Celestia. Celestia. Okay. Well, what but, about the new princess and the sister-in-law? I mean, those two are, well, seems to be fun. Like, they're hip. They're hop, too. <laughs> Not interested? <laughs> it's kind of like they didn't have... Uh, how do you say? Time to um, develop them. Nobody yeah. likes Princess Kyla. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> she's no. not. She's not even out yet. Like officially <laughs> out in the show yet. <laughs> oh god, no. Bad then, bad. <laughs> I think she's in the box. I think she's in the box. You know. Oh no. Oh god, no. <laughs> oh, no don't go there yet. Don't go there yet until the show actually comes out. Oh, yeah. So, so anyway, so it's going to be. Uh, Luna and Celestia. Those are good choices. Those are, those are good choices. Well, actually, I don't have a problem with Cadence and Twilight. It's just a preference okay. over them. <laughs> oh, it's cool, it's cool. We, we have multiple answers here. And believe it or not, Cadence, if I'm not mistaken, she was just selected once as favourite princess here, I, I guess. But anyway, the second question is, what's your favourite episode? Favourite episode? Hmm. Okay, that's a... That's a tough question because I don't really have a favorite episode. It's like more like I have multiple episodes where certain parts of it I like more than others. I don't I don't really have a favorite episode actually. Well like Dan said, multiple answers are allowed so you can this is, actually this aren't multiple answers like no And then you know some so, people oh. have actually chosen entire seasons. Uh, yeah that's true. Mm, I think I think that I I kind of like too many pinky pies because it's like oh there's so many pinkies <laughs> and I like the part where she pull off that the older generation pony oh. face. <laughs> uh, that, that is a good one. That is a good one. That is a good one. Also, too many Pinkie Pie ideas then. Alrighty then. So, now here comes the tough ones. Question number three is, how did you become a fan of the show? I got introduced into the show and it just ran off with there. Um, I only came in when they were showing season two halfway, like almost to the ending. Uh, a friend, she was, she's actually in the Vony group, that Falafel Woogie that you heard. Ah, okay. Have you seen her? Uh, I don't hang out there so much, so I got no idea. <laughs> uh, ah, you don't? Or how about that 
that the other day that live stream she was under Jen. Oh, her? Yeah, she she's actually my classmate in college. Oh, oh okay, okay. So that's well, that explains a lot then. Hmm. <laughs> well, okay, no problem then. So she was responsible for getting you yeah, to be a fan just, then. Yeah, she is responsible for this madness and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. This is the crazy slope that we're going up or down. No, it's down, descending, definitely <laughs> descending to madness. <laughs> oh, I, I can see that. I can see that. So she introduced you to the show. And since you're a girl, here's the thing mm-hmm. that I like to ask. Because most of the guests we have here are guys. And guys' answer are always boring and stuff. So, from a girl's point of view, why do you like the show? For me, it's quite entertaining and it's like, it harks back to the old days of cartoon where like, I don't know, it just have this timeless feel in the sense that older shows had mm-hmm. and probably it's like, it refers to that and also modern cartoons more. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's quite a mix. Like, and uh, how do you say, instead of like, um, some shows where it's like characters are one-dimensional, they're just there for gags and things like that. Mm-hmm. This one actually have like, personalities and characters driven by action. So I guess that's quite interesting, actually. They have actually depth and personality and not one-sided, like, two-dimensional characters. Oh, okay. And, like, and like also also there's another thing that, um, how do you say, um, that, that I quite like that, like, for example, Applejack, she is, like, the element of honesty, mm-hmm. but that can also be her weakness, you know, in the sense that she's stubborn, she just doesn't want to admit. She's, like... Too honest in the sense that so it's so it's interesting how how the writers and the developers I mean the people behind the show plays with that like oh your strength can also be your weakness you know if you if you read that kind of things that is yeah <laughs> so you were pretty like, rotten <laughs> so it's like not not um it has entertainment value for for kids little girls you know like the that was the goal audience and like mm. and that's how they pick up the older audience because. It's like those kind of cartoons where they just appeal to everyone. Hmm. Then that's a very good answer. That's a very good answer. I don't think we had that answer before, right, Dan? Uh, no, because if we had something close to it, because everybody always talks about how the two-dimensional, the, the non-one-dimensional characters always tends to capture, and uh, that seems to be the trademark of Lauren Faust. Hmm, true. True that, true that. But anyway, the last question is... What do your family and friends think about your love for the show? They're quite alright with it, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah, my mom was like, uh, for my mom, she was like, oh, okay, you can buy all these ponies and stuff. She, she's quite alright with it. She's quite supportive and okay. stuff for my art wise, though. Hmm, okay, that's cool. That's good. That's good. And what about your friends? Oh, my friends. I had one friend who <laughs> she was from like my secondary, my primary school. Like, it's a really long time friend. Mm-hmm. She she's not used to me having all this cute stuff. Like that. She you always used to be like, oh, I'm the friend who's all deaf and gloom and stuff. Like that. And then all of a sudden it's like, what you like ponies? Who are you? What you done to Serlin? Oh my! <laughs> Just show her the comic. Oh boys. <laughs> oh, but then but then I got I dragged her into watching the episode. She was like, all right, I admit it, I am entertaining. <laughs> Slowly then. Good job. No, 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 she's just entertained. Soon. Yeah, she's just entertained. Soon. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> so anyway, th- thank you for answering um, my four questions. And moving on, let's go to housekeeping. And in today's housekeeping, we will reach episode 100 soon, and we want you to be a part of it. Send us an email asking us anything you want to know. Email can be sent to... Uh, the MBS show at gmail.com. <laughs> Well, I can't believe I derp on that. But anyway, yes, um, episode 100 is coming soon. I hope you send us questions and anything because, you know, 100 episode, we're going to have a ball. Woohoo! Yep. And we want your feedback. Indeed, indeed. So anyway, let's move on to news time. So in today's news time, the Brony community is awesome and has broken be cool too. Last week, we talked about Sarah Feder, a proud mother of a five-year-old brony son, Ari, who is a brony. During the following weeks, her story has spread throughout the brony community like wildfire. The brony community had welcomed Ari with open arms. Some had even made them pony sonas as a welcoming gift. Overwhelmed, Sarah wrote to Hasbro about the 
posts and linking it to them. Christine, a public representative for Hasbro, took notice of the posts and had sent them some My Little Pony merchandise. Links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, who of you had remembered about this news? I'll go with Dan. First time hearing about it. Oh, really now? Yeah, I'm serious. I mean, I haven't been keeping up. Oh, and Celine, what about you? Um, actually, I think it's it's kind of fun that the community is very, like, how do you say? Sometimes, you know, there's good and bad things to each side of a fandom. Mm-hmm. So this is one of the highlight moments. So even though I don't keep up with it, I think it's quite awesome that they make a little kid, like, bad, smile and put a smile on his face. <laughs> That, that is true, that is true. Because if you think about it, how many communities does that? For example, if let's just say a uh, mother finds out son is a Naruto fan, would the Naruto fandom jump on on it? Like, will they? No, but the Naruto fandom isn't anything out of the ordinary. Bronies are definitely something out of the ordinary. Yeah, but still, we're, we're not talking about the... I mean, generic show. generic news doesn't go anywhere on the internet. It's just like, my son's a Naruto fan, so is everyone who's meant to watch Naruto. But if you say, my son is a My Little Pony fan, then things, are, things will sound a bit different. These are the stories that catch on. Yeah, but the thing is then, it's based on a community because this news is technically not news. It's just a blog post by a mother on her blogger page. And the Brony community latch on to it. And guess what? They had a good time. Thinking about other communities, that's the question. Would they do the same? Maybe not. Mm. Mm. It's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, that's true, it's true. But anyway, moving on to the next news. Sure as heck won't happen in Malaysia. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, you're just a Mr. Grumpy Pants. But anyway, let's move on to the next topic. Pony Deck Box coming soon. Now that Pony has its own card game, gamers need a place to keep their cards protected. And what better way to do so with the help of Ultra Pro? In a previous episode, we mentioned that Ultra Pro has released some My Little Pony products. Some of those products were card sleeves and play mats. And now Ultra Pro brings us deck box to keep our cards organized. Currently, they are taking pre-orders now and will ship in March. Links can be found in the show notes. So, I am a card player. I am so excited about all the products that I will never get. <laughs> oh, boys. Are these made of what? Plastic or cardboard or...? They're made of durable plastic. Yeah, yeah usually time, cardboards are made of plastic. This kind plastic. of cardboard, at least. I mean, card box. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like the first time I've ever seen plastic boxes available for pre-order. Well, then... That means you you have not been in the trading card game community at all. Of course not. Uh, I mean, deck boxes. G- card boxes just sounds odd. <laughs> deck boxes. But no, still, for any card gamers out there, they would know Ultra Pro is a very popular brand. They supply all the card accessories for Pokemon, Magic the Gathering, and even Kaijudo. I don't know why I said that. But yes, they supply all those stuff. And, well, since My Little Pony has its own card game... Why not do it for them? The best part is, from what I read on their website, there comes Tree Design, The Great Powerful Trixie, Rainbow Dash, and Rarity. So if you like any of those designs, head into the show notes to look at the pictures. I already stated in a few episodes back, I am a card gamer person. And Dan, you're not, right? Uh, No, I mean, unless you're talking about the usual card Mm, deck. Yes. So what about you, Celine? Are you into any card games? Ah, yes, actually. I'm a Pokemon card collector. Mm. You know, do they do have the big size cards for Pokemon. So you could use the card sleeve for the Pokemons and then you can buy the My Little Pony deck box to keep your cards, you know, I mean, to ponify your deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, that's kind of like old hobby. I still keep my cards around, but I don't collect new ones anymore, though. Oh, me. Which is, uh, well, money, things uh, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can get expensive. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon can be an expensive game indeed. But you know, you could always start a new card game, the Pokemon, um, the My Little Pony card game, if they would send it here because I know I would play it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think Malaysia will import them though. It's like mm. sad. <laughs> I do know a supplier, but the problem is if they want to take it in, they had to import one carton of it, and importing one carton for a game that might not sell it's a tough sell yeah it's quite a tough sell <laughs> mm-hmm. 
But anyway, let's move on to the next news topic. And the next news topic is Hasbro confirms an LMP season 5. Recently, Hasbro Studio President Stephen Davis was interviewed by WorldScreen.com. During their discussion about successful shows on the hub, Davis had this to say We have My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. We are going into our fifth season, just a tremendous success for us. So another season of Ponies has been confirmed and we can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Links can be found in the show notes. So guys, I'm going to start off with Dan. Season 5. I'm not very excited to be honest because they've not been doing a good job with Season 4 as far as I'm concerned. Oh really now? Yep. Hmm, okay. We need to discuss this later then because I want to pick your mind. But Celine, what, do you, what about you? I'm not too sure because since season 4 is not finished yet, um, I'm quite... It's a mixed feeling. It's like, oh, this is next season 5, so there might be like cool episodes there too. But on the other hand, season 4 is like... It's not really... Um, how do you say that? It's, I don't think that it's even halfway there, right? It's like Nope, it's not. Yeah, it's not halfway there. So it's like it's hard to say what the future of Pony is going to be about. But I'm quite happy that they have a season 5, I guess. Because it's like, oh, there's more ponies. Then they might somehow redeem themselves if season 4 did, does not reach expectation, I guess. Yeah, Maybe. True. true. Well, I mean, you know, I do a weekly review show with our other co-host, James. And for, from now, we, we haven't reached an episode where we are disappointed in the show or angry or like say that this episode is bad. Because yeah. I'm not there. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's just neutral, I guess. It's like, just there, right? Yeah, like, but the thing is, either we we say, it's an okay episode, or we love this episode. So, mm-hmm. for us saying that, oh, we hate this episode, it's not there yet. But we're only in our ninth episode. So, who knows? I hope not, but like I said, who knows? I mean, as I said, for the first three seasons, it was always okay or good. But season four is the first season where I've actually said this episode sucks. Oh, really now? Yeah, well, the first time I've actually reached the stage where I said, this sucks, this is a bad episode. Like, if you read my reviews on miso- gomiso.com, yeah, there's some episodes I really tore apart. Oh, really now? Hmm, okay. I, I I might need to go read it then, because, hmm, this is interesting. And then, you, 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 you and me need to talk about this, because, hmm, interesting, interesting. But anyway, that's news time. Let's move on to the next topic, and the next topic is guest time. In today's guest time, we have Celine Lowe, a Malaysian pony artist and also a cosplayer. Hey there, Celine. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Having fun yet? Yeah, I'm having fun. It's quite fun. It's like, oh, it's an upbeat interview and it's quite carefree and stuff. <laughs> Yay, I'm doing my job right. Woo! <laughs> so anyway, um, before we start, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Um, so, hello everyone. My name is Celine. You can just, like, Celine Lau, but you can just call me Celine. No problem with that. And, like, Norma introduced me. I'm an artist. Not just pony artist, actually. I'm just an artist. And cosplayer. Right now, I'm studying uh, digital animation in the One Academy. And I'm about to graduate this year. So, having a background in art actually helps me in my pony art. But... Since I'm studying digital animation, that's actually one of the reasons why I watch My Little Pony because it's like, oh, it's animation, I can study from that and stuff. Because even if the episode might not be good, the animation is still there, they are still doing their job. And season 4 is actually like, I can see them trying to explore more of the animation, especially the characters' faces. Like, most prominently... What was the name again? Pinky Harsh Pie? Minnie's oh, yeah. face. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's her. like, they just made a full customized face for her just to look really pissed off and annoyed. <laughs> that is true, that is true. And not only that, um, you also do sell pony weapons, right? Yes, actually, that's my first adventure in Comic Fair Star, opening ah. a booth, selling my art. That Yeah, that is really the first time. It's, it's very exciting because it's like, oh, wow, there's actually people who are willing to buy my art. So it's like, oh, I'm actually reaching this kind of um, high enough level where it's like, where I'm confident enough to show my work to everyone else because I'm 
used to be quite shy to show my work. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. So um, I'm at your DeviantArt page, and well, one would assume that your DeviantArt would be Celine Lau, or Lau or Lo, because I am very derpy here, because... Oh, no, 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 it's okay because, you know, Chinese name, yeah, you can yeah. pronounce what, whichever way. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> so, so it's actually Lao. Okay, Celine Lao. So, okay, one would assume your DeviantArt page would be Celine Lao something or something like that. But here is something that I did not expect. It's Kiara Artworks. Is that true? Ah, yes, that's <laughs> actually a kind of pet peeve of mine because... You know, when you're young, you uh, tend to put names that does not make sense. So I'm like, looking at it, it's like, oh no, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, whenever I get a chance, I would like to change it to Chipichi. It's my name of my current mascot. So it's more uniform throughout all my website. Uh, it's like, oh, it's this cute little mascot's name. I guess it's easier instead of this. I have no idea how to pronounce name. <laughs> yeah. But still, but still, um, people should... Visit your page. I'll put that in the show notes. But still, they should visit your living art page because you not only do, um, like like you said, you not only do pony art, you also do Pokemon art and Marvel art too. Ah uh, yes, actually, I I'm kind of more the artist who created the living art to put their fan arts first. Um, mostly because to just brush up my skills. So in preparation for my own original arts, I do have them like in storage, gathering dust there. <laughs> Uh, still, it, it looks good. It looks good. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for saying that. <laughs> oh, no problem, because I'm I'm currently looking at a few right now, and I have to say, um, your comic fiesta 2013 Yevely, uh, I don't know how to say that Pokemon's name. <laughs> Vital. I, pre- I I think it's called. Um, uh, we pronounce it as Vital. Vital. Yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the dragon Pokemon on the Pokemon X and Y box. It's the Y Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, and, I know why. Yeah, and and that looks good. Seriously, it looks good. And by the looks of this, did you draw this by hand or digital? Um, it's digital. Ah, because it has that analog look, like, like that pencil or color pencil look. So, what tool do you use for your art? Um, actually, I have a mix between paint to size, mm-hmm. photo and Photoshop, and I use a Wacom Babu tablet. It has been, it has been serving me well for quite a couple of years already. Mm. And for the Vita one, personally, I use a Psy because Psy is better at sketching and giving that traditional look. It's, mm. it's like, um, Psy is easier to achieve the pencil texture look than Photoshop. Mm. For me, that is. Okay, I've seen other artists use Paint to Psy too and they look good. They look awesome. Yeah, actually, it's really awesome, Paint to Psy. <laughs> it's quite an awesome program. So, I've noticed here too that you don't do much pony art. Um, you recently joined the fandom, right? Yeah, actually, um, I joined the fandom since, um, I think I've mentioned it before, like mid-season of season two. But then I've only actually started drawing since last year, the pony arts. It's like, oh, I have gained enough interest on my own to actually start drawing pony arts because I tend to only draw fan arts that I'm really into their fandom. I mean, into their characters or shows. Or else, I won't draw them. That's hmm. How I motivate myself to <laughs> to improve my skills and stuff. Uh, understandable, understandable. We we are like that. If I'm not motivated by a show, I won't be doing this podcast. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway. Other than that, you said you use Sai and Photoshop and also a bamboo tablet. But you do do a stream, right? Um, I have done few streams, but mostly it's just for personal and for among friends only. Um, mm-hmm. recently I did a stream on Friday from this interview um, I just invited the Malaysian Brony group and they've been quite supportive actually that's my first real life live ah, streaming oh, I haven't okay. really done it with other people as in strangers before <laughs> and that was my also my first time second time maybe um, okay let's just say recently yes. <laughs> um, recently I got this really awesome program called Mischief Oh. It's like even better at achieving the pencil mm-hmm. traditional look than Sai. So it's like, oh, this actually feels like drawing on paper minus the paper. <laughs> Which is strange. Yes, I've I seen that stream and, well, it looks good. And I was surprised that that program, was it free? Uh, no, it's not free. My ah. friend gifted it to me. Ah. Well, it is a good application to have that um, authentic pencil look because... 
when I took a look at it, uh, when, sorry, when you drew, it felt really clean and really pencil-like. Yeah, it's um, kind of like the purpose of the program, I guess. It's, mm. The strip is more to the um, sketch program for me, uh, but I've, I've seen people use it to like really amazing traditional-looking arts. I haven't practiced that yet. Mostly, I just use it for sketches, like incomplete, really rough sketches. And oh, stuff. But still, it, it looks good. It looks good. I, I think you should try and do a full fledged art using that program and post it because people would want to see. I I will attempt it in the near fu- in the near future. Oh, okay. Just have to get used to the program more. <laughs> From what I saw, you were already used to it by now. <laughs> oh no! It's just it's just sketching a pencil and eraser. It's Colour, no, if you see me colour, you just like, you probably get really bored because it'll take for me forever to cut up. <laughs> That's no problem, it's no problem. Going back to your pony buttons that you sold at CF, mm-hmm. um, what was your inspiration for that? The pony actually wasn't the plan for buttons at all. I wanted to do Pokemon. And then I was figuring out, it's like, oh, there's quite a lot of people who was doing Pokemon. And I was like, I'm not really, um, how do you say that? Big fan of Pokemon? No, no, you can't. No, no, you can't say it for Pokemon. <laughs> my room is littered with Pokemon. <laughs> oh my! Um, it's more like, oh, maybe I just like um, do something different, like a pony. It's like, I mean, um, I'm pretty sure since X and Y came out, a lot of people will be doing the Pokemon button. So I was like, oh, why don't I do something different? So that's actually how I shifted my ideas to ponies, mm. and also I feel that I could draw it easier because I've really, I've, it's quite an unfortunate mm. thing that. Uh, my college final projects are clashing this year so it was like really a very rush for me uh-huh. so it's like the only thing I could really draw fast enough with my current level of art skill so pony badges it was and since CF was really near to Christmas I made it a Christmas team so it was all Christmas team pony button badges and and I'm actually quite happy that I changed the pony because if not I probably won't get to meet you guys yeah, that's true. That's true. You won't. You won't know this artist who did <laughs> pony arts and like part of the pony community. <laughs> no, that is true. That is true. Because um, the the thing is, when I was at Comic Fiesta, moving around to the vendor halls, a few booths away, they had the ponies. Like um, they they were from Singapore, and they had the Billabear plush. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they had the Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy plush. Fluttershy Pinkie Pie. I don't remember. It was Fluttershy. Shy, right. So they had the two plush over there, and they had their buttons sold there. And oh, cool! Like their brony is awesome. And I think I know one of them. I derping on the name because I am bad with names. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, here's the thing that I noticed at CF. If you're a brony, you wear a shirt that says you are a brony. And if you're a stall that supports bronies, you put your pony buttons up high and show me. <laughs> and when I went to your booth, you did that. And wow, pony buttons. Unfortunately for me, I did not notice that. Um, our good friend, Winston Ong, noticed it and introduced me to you guys. Ah, uh, yes. Actually, I have to thank Winston because he saw my post in the pony group and where I promoted my buttons. And I was like, oh, I want to go and order one. It's like, can I have an RD, please? And I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And also at the con, you did commissions, right? Um, yeah. Actually, I wasn't planning to do commissions. Just that, actually, all this I feel kind of like it's quite fated in a way that, oh, I have suddenly been inducted into the pony program. <laughs> because it's like really, really, I was like, um, what is it? It's like seriously not planned for me. Even um, when I printed all these badges, it was lying there. My mom was looking at it. I was like, hmm, are you sure people are going to buy these pony badges? And I was like. Um, I really hope that people will buy it. And then it's like, oh, so it's like, oh, there's so many, like, bronies and Pega sisters or whatever you want oh to call yourselves. So okay, and I was like, nice. yeah, I, would get, I got excited. I was like, yes, I have found my people. <laughs> so here's the real question then. Here's the real question then. Mm-hmm. Out of all the buttons that you printed, I'm not going to ask how many, but did you sell all of them? No, I did not. But, oh. but RD and Pinky got very close to selling out. <laughs> really now oh ah, okay yep. so okay so that, that's cool because i got the whole set because i have an ocd where if i collect a set i must collect everything <laughs> <laughs> so it's like no i have to get everything <laughs> yes even though if i don't like this pony i must get everything <laughs> because it's a set <laughs> yes it's a, it's a set so must get 
So now you know you can make your set like 200 buttons and then you'll sell it all. Uh, that's too much. Oh, oh that's, that's like manipulative. It's like you have to get the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, play on the OCD. <laughs> oh, no. uh, it's probably, it'd probably be only Norman and a few rare ones who actually uh, like, oh no, like I have to get the whole thing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is true, that is true. Oh boy. If you only knew how much I spent on pony buttons at Comic Fiesta this year. <laughs> Uh, that's strange. Pony buttons. Other people went home with wooden swords or dakimakuras or even um, t-shirts. Or a PS4. We're not going to talk about that one. Uh, I came home with pony buttons. Bags of them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boys. But anyway, uh, besides the pony buttons, like you said, um, your commissions at Comic Fiesta were uh-huh. unprepared, like on the spot. So what made you do that? Um, actually, it was like this group of ponies, I don't think they were part of your, your um, Facebook group, actually. Mm-hmm. I think they were another one. Okay. They came by and saw the button badges, and then one of them said, do you have a Princess Luna? Then mm-hmm. I told him, like, oh, no, sorry, I did not have, which is quite unfortunate. Actually, I planned it to have, but again, time problems. I really, mm-hmm. really couldn't fit it in, so I didn't have the Princess Luna. And But I told him that, oh, I could do a commission for you if you like. And lo and behold, I still had Vincent's free um, request sketch because he pre-ordered for me. Oh. And I showed him that um, that particular sketch and he actually liked it. So he started commissioning me. <laughs> and I was fortunate that Vincent had not picked up his sketch yet. So it's actually like, how do you say this? It's, it really feels like everything was planned and somehow fated to happen. So, then he was like, he like, got excited. He's like, oh. And then his friends were like, um, like supporting him on, oh, come on. Her art is good. Why don't you just commission her? And then he was like, fine, fine, I'll do it. And it's like, then that's how it all started. It's like, okay. I would like Princess Luna commission. And it's like, that, yeah, that kind of started from there. Then all of a sudden, I, I really have no idea how you people manage to find me it's like it spread like wildfire because I wasn't advertising myself whatsoever oh, yeah. all of a sudden it's like another bony came it's like yeah this is the artist with the commission and it's like okay where are these people coming from oh and then like my good friend she's really kind she's like she let me steal some of her A- A5 paper she's like ah it's okay it's cheap you can go ahead I was like oh thank you so much and it's like I took her all, took her paper to dry and stuff <laughs> Oh my! That that is that is um strange, really, because uh you went in not prepared, you know, just sitting there. I'm maybe gonna sell some buttons and maybe play on my 3ds, playing some of the Pokemon's. But <laughs> yeah. suddenly, what people want commissions? Oh, okay. I guess I can do one or two. Yeah, it's like oh my, there's pony commissions coming in. It's like okay, okay, and then after that, like day one, I was at the booth more. Yeah. So it's like I got. I got people coming in, I finished off and gave it off to them. And then after that, I just went off to do some cosplaying around, to bring around with my other cosplay friends who weren't at the booth. And then uh, all of a sudden, my friend was like trying to call me, Oi, hello, pick up your phone, man. It's like, you have like brony people coming to ask commissions. Like, what? No, I'm... <laughs> I'm like stuck in like, you know, everywhere. <laughs> well... Oh, boys, uh, be, being in this community can be a um, tough thing to be in because sometimes you're not expecting to be this popular, especially artists. You know, you're just there, you know, to sell your swags and maybe <laughs> have some fun. Well, then, you know what, I'll cosplay. But suddenly, people are interested. Oh, what? You want me to do what? Okay, I, I'll do one or two. Then suddenly spread like wildfire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of yeah, course. I mean, nobody has done that here before in the CF. Like, la- last two years, nobody took pony commissions. So this is something new and everybody naturally sees it live and really wants it. So it's something new and it really worked. And I, if you ask me, I strongly suggest you do it again this year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just hope that I will be around because my plan is like, not really fixed since I'm graduating and stuff. Mm. Well, still, I too am a happy customer because I bought a commission too and my commission was Princess Luna and uh, Princess Twilight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you like them? <laughs> yeah, I do, I do, I did. Uh, I wish now I can just frame it or something like that because it's really nice. I need to buy a frame. Oh, really? <laughs> any, any helpful critics of what I can improve? Because as an artist, I would really like to improve on my art. 
Well, you know what? Um, unfortunately for me, I am not that kind of artist. Maybe my friend... No, okay, here's the thing. I showed it to my friends from Spain, United States, and even Scotland. And they say it's good. They like it. Oh, okay then. So I guess I'm doing something right. <laughs> yeah. If you want me to... That's not a word! ...about it, maybe use more colours. Like, get them coloured. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I'll charge you more because, like, no, I need to use more colours and it's more <laughs> troublesome than one colour. <laughs> yeah, that's indeed. But still, um, if you do have a chance to open up a booth and sell swags, you should do it. You should do it. Yeah, I, I hope to. Actually, um, if I could, I would open one more at Animangaki. Have mm. you all been to Animangaki? I've heard of it, but I haven't had the chance to go to it. It's near Sunway, so it's actually near my college, so it's, mm. it was convenient for me to go there. And Dan, do you think um, Sunway is close to your place? Um, was... Yeah, I'm in, I'm in KL, so everything's within reach. <laughs> <laughs> So and pretty much Sunway will. Sunway is also a great place because for those people who live a little far off from KL, it's a pretty convenient place to go to. There's a lot of public transport that can get you there as well. Hmm. So, uh, by, by the way, you're not in Sunway, right? No, no, I'm not. Uh, so then, you're not in Sunway too? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. But I study there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the uh, Solar Empire of Malaysia. Uh, oh, wait, so are you in Sunway University or something? No, I was in Taylor's. Was. Oh, okay. He's an alumni now. Yeah, Proud she... to be out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, moving on from all these convention talks and most people getting bored. Besides um, all the arts and stuff you do, you also mentioned that you do cosplay? Yes, I do actually. I'm quite a newbie at it. I just started. Uh, now it's 2014. I can't say this year anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's a few months back. 12, I got my first costume for my birthday present, so I'm ah. like, hey, I'm happy, but I only really started cosplaying on 2013 when my other friends, like, joined in more, so it's, like, it's more fun, you know, the more the merrier and stuff mm. like that. Okay. So, yeah, um, Comic Festa was my first really big convention in cosplay, so it's really exciting, it's like, all of a sudden you hear people screaming your character's name and like, I want to take a picture with you! Oh, oh. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's really fun. Uh, it's fortunate for me that I did not have any bad experience on, um, for it, for my first time. Oh. Everyone was quite happy, like, you know, gra- uh, like, like asking for pictures and like, oh, can I have a picture please? And like some other cosplayers, like, I had a small talk with them, they gave me their cost cards and I, uh. and I do look them out on their Facebook and things like that. Mm, I, I was there with you and we wanted to walk to the convention center and yeah mm-hmm. peop- a lot of people say oh yeah can I take a picture with you can I take a picture with you okay so this is going to take a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah you kind of it tend to happen like if you post for one person then oh, everyone yeah. will just swarm to you and take oh, a picture and then they just go off it's like it's a very strange phenomenon <laughs> oh, that, that's what we want really <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've noticed on your Facebook page you also have a Facebook page by the name of Chirpy Chip? Yep, Chirpy mm. Um However you want to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm bad. So uh, whatever I said might be wrong. <laughs> so no, anyway, uh, that's alright because it's like, oh, you're free to pronounce it however you want. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, I do see that you have a keyblade. So you made that yourself, right? Yep, I made that myself after a whole year of procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> but still, uh, not only that you do pony arts, you also do cosplay items. That is rare. Really rare. Yeah, I do my own props. It's like, no, I have like, I'm also OCD really when it comes to my own. <laughs> like, I have to get everything perfect. It's like, no. Like, um, how do you say? My my mom usually watches me do all these things like when she's free. So she's like, there's nothing wrong with it. Come on. But it's like, no. And then my brother would join in and say, it's like, no, she's OCD. She's an OCD artist. My brother <laughs> would say that. And it's like, um... Then I'm like, no, this small stroke, I have to do it right. It's like, then I look at it, it's like, okay, no one else but me would notice, actually. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a thing when um, you're doing all these props, actually. I'm pretty sure a lot of people who does their own props and things like that, it's like, you have to be as accurate as you can. It's just oh, like your own passion because it's a hobby. So And the joy is in building the costume, that's true. Mm, yep. True, or the prop, or the prop. So it's like, oh, you get to see your hard work pay off. Mm-hmm. When people go and take pictures, especially that um, Rainbow Dash, uh, like that Equestria Go Rainbow Dash person, who got on stage, man. That is really awesome because yep. of, well, the de- the level of dedication that Rainbow Dash put into it. Mm. 
Uh, especially the body pain. It's oh, not yeah. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> Some people don't dare, but... Whew. Yeah, he just painted on. Cosplaying is um, quite a broad thing. And uh, even last year and a couple of years ago, I did it as well. And I can understand how you feel about building your own costume. But basically, a uh, curious question. Are you planning on doing a pony cosplay anytime soon? No, actually, I'm not. And I kind of have to rectify one of your... One of your um, statement, I I did not build my costume. I only built my prop. The costume is made courtesy of professional <laughs> cosplay. Um, sorry, the name is really long. A professional custom cosplay costume. Yeah, they did my both of my cosplays on day one and day two. Uh, that I uh, did Did you design it and give it to them or what? Uh, no, no, they are from characters from established series. Mm. Oh, okay, I see. So basically, uh, they pay you to dress up in that get-up then? No, no, no. <laughs> I pay them to uh, make the costume for me. <laughs> oh my. But still, still, uh, costume is a costume because um, maybe next year or this year, I, I might be doing a cosplay too. I got no idea. Me and a friend of mine are planning something, so who knows? If we do go, I'll just announce it or something. But still... Uh, There's no teaser of what you're going to do? I'm not sure. Like, let's see, I, I'm 100% not sure what I want to wear. But I can tell, I, I can see the excitement that uh, you cosplayers get when you go there because people asking for pictures and people stopping you for pictures. That is really exciting and fun. So besides the ponies and the Pokemons, I noticed that you like Marvel too. Yep, that is also another recent fandom I've fallen into. <laughs> okay, so to be, to be more specific, right? To be more specific, um, when, when we say uh, Marvel... Um, we see a lot of Loki. So, are you a Loki fan or a general Marvel fan? I would say Loki is my favorite character because of the Avengers show. Mm-hmm. It kind of started from there. And other than that, actually, I quite like Thor and Loki. Their dynamism as brothers. Mm-hmm. It's really fun to see them jab at each other, actually. <laughs> okay, that's true, that's true. But not only that, I also see Dark Phoenix in your collection. So... Um, an X Men fan? Ah, actually, this this is kind of like a, quite a jump in my interest. When I was a kid, I used to watch all the cartoon oh. shows of X Men. They used to show them all the time. Uh, it's yeah. like, oh, I always have to catch the X Men show. I can't really remember them anymore. I probably have to watch them again. So I kind of lost interest. Totally lost. <laughs> my mom used to actually buy me even like the DC ones from Batman, oh. and. Being the naive kid I am, I thought Batman and Spider-Man are the same company, so I was just like, okay, <laughs> but now I know better. <laughs> oh, no, 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 yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing wrong with that, because... Yeah, I know, I know there's nothing wrong with that, it's just that um, sometimes it's confusing, you know, someone who's not, like, a really hardcore person, but it's like, oh, okay, I, um, when you grow up, you know more. Mm, true, true. So, yeah, as a kid, actually, I watch quite a lot of superhero sh- shows. I'm not really a typical girl, you know, like those stereotypes you think mm. about. I'm quite a mix. I watch Batman, I watch Spider-Man, I watch Powerpuff Girls, it's Ooh. like everything. Yeah, <laughs> Whatever I mean, catch my interest, I watch it. Like, I even watch Digimon. Oh god, Digimon. We, I think we all did. I mean, this generation of kids, like, um, we we are, we, we watch everything from the Digimons to the Pokemons to the Sailor Moons to the Ranma One Half, even to the Cut Captor Mans, like, oh, Cut Captors. Oh, did you watch Metabots? Metabots! A bit. <laughs> a bit. Well, it looks like I missed out on my childhood. I was watching, what, Care Bears? Oh, yeah. don't worry, I watched that too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, K- Care Bears normal. Care Bears normal for that generation, but, like, you didn't watch Digimons or the Pokemon. I mean, at least you have to watch Pokemon. No. What? No Pokemon? I didn't no. Uh, Ash never grows up. That's the thing. Ash never grows up. <laughs> oh, well, I guess everyone watches, like, at least a certain thing, like, here mm. and there, bits of- we can't watch everything, I guess. Oh, anyway. yeah. oh, no, no. In this day and age, we can watch everything. Like, ah. right now, currently, I'm watching Kill la Kill. And anybody who hasn't seen it, you should go see it. Oh, yes, I watch it. The latest. Uh, I watched it, too. Oh, yeah. We, we can talk about it later, because this is not... Kill la Kill is not a pony topic. But yeah. anyway... We're going off topic <laughs> to watch. Yeah. Yes, well, that, that's what happens when... We discussed about things we like. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's about it. Right, Dan? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, then. So anyway, that was our guest, Celine Lowe. Thank you for coming on and thank you for sharing things with us. And it was it was fun. It was fun. You're welcome, Norman. I just hope I didn't totally detract and 
my mouth kind of ran off on its own sometimes when I talk. Oh, uh, trust me, trust me. We've we've seen worse. Oh, we 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 have uh, more challenges than this. This is <laughs> me derping. Oh, right. Yep. So anyway, uh, Celine, where can they find you online? Oh, you can find me on Davianart. Mm-hmm. Tumblr and actually I do have a Twitter but it's kind of dead right now. Ah. <laughs> and you can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page there too. Mm. So on the winner is Garya. So it's Garya. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can you can leave a note uh, in yeah. your description, right? I can leave a link to where they can find you on the show notes. Okay, there's like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and David Up. Uh, now, now, once you said Twitter, you know you have to join the Twitter community, right? Yes, I also see in your, in your how do you say your 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 MBS show notes. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have a Twitter there. Yeah, we have yep. a Twitter. Sweetie Mod is excited to tweet stuff. Usually, she just complains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, so anyway, let's move on to the next topic, and the next topic is shoutouts. My first shout out goes to you, Dan. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, no problem. You've been awesome. Like, um, quietly awesome, but that's not good. No, you should speak more. <laughs> oh, you don't want to start me off. Uh, yes, yeah, true. Maybe later. But anyway, my second shout out goes to you, Celine. Thank you for coming on and thank you for being an awesome guest. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this interview. Oh, no problem. I'm honored to talk to you again and getting to pick your brains and knowing that you love things that I love too. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and also my last shout-out goes to my other co-host, James Cork. Thank you for being there for me when I need you. And Dan, what about you? Uh, I don't have any for this week. Oh, really? No? Yeah. I mean... oh, okay, that's rare. I can't shout out to my room because it's in a mess. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can full throw diet. <laughs> That's so 2013. Nah, I don't want to do anything damaging to it. I like <laughs> nice things. Yes, everybody does. And what about you, Celine? Any shout out to give out to? Um, actually, I do have one shout out that um a fellow pony artist. Mm. He's releasing his animation called Lullaby for Princess. Oh, it's by Wap Out. And actually, I'm quite excited. I've been following him for some time. Um, I saw his animatics for Lullaby for Princess, which is um, composed by another fellow pony musician. Mm-hmm. Oh dear, I forgot what's the name Christina of it. Christina Larson, Pony Phonic. Ah, yes, 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 that one. That is like, really, you know, it's, it's really, um, for me, I really like that song. Mm. And this guy, he's actually animating a full music video for it. And he's doing it traditionally and in that sense traditionally by his drawing everything frame by frame ah. in flash and i've seen his live stream and stuff it's looking really awesome and has an animator myself animator to be myself i'm really excited for it it's really awesome go check it out i'll leave that in the show notes and i'm looking at it right now but i shouldn't <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway but anyway if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow at gmail.com. That is the same place where you should send emails to the 100th episode. Be awesome. Send us emails. And also, if you would like to email us personally, everything will be found in the show notes. And also, you can find us on Twitter. You can find the MBS show at the MBS show. Sweetie Mod will tweet stuff about editing the show, what's going on this week, or random stuff or interact with you guys and you can find me at Norman Sanzo I'll tweet about pictures of uh, sorry, I'll tweet about toys food and whatever tickles my fancy and Dan what about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at St. Pinky S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E it's on autopilot and I speak when I'm talked to Oh, uh, that's so sad but you do post stuff about stuff related to your Facebook page so that's stuff that's why it's on autopilot eh. what about you Celine? Where can I find you on the Twitters? Um, you can find me, but I don't really recommend you finding me because, like I said, that account is pretty dead. I only used to follow people, mostly. So a stalker then. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, you could say that, but um, like my other accounts, it's under Chippy Chippy. It's more to a role-playing account of my mm. rescot. So if you post, I mean, you can find me there, of course. You can talk to me there, but mostly it's... For, um, like I say, it's a role-playing thing. It's oh. just for a fun little thing. Alrighty then. So if you want to role-play with Celine, you can go find her at Chippy Chip? Yep. Alrighty then. I'll ask for the links later then. 
And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and also like us on Stitcher Radio and like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And I've been Sunny Lau. And we'll see you next week with less derps. <laughs> see you guys. Bye. 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 Place is not mine, and all is not fine. Like where is all my corruption? I need destruction to make me feel okay. Did I get lost along the way? Playing nice like they wanted me to be. No, I will not smile to make your day. I just wanna cause a little entropy. You tried so hard to make a hero out of me. But there are some rules I don't obey. Is my own mansion. It's all messed up. I don't care. Cause what fun is there in ever making sense? Did I get lost along the way? Lose my mind for a new identity. I quite enjoy ruining your day, and I just wanna cause a little entropy. You really tried so hard to make a hero out of me, but there are some rules I don't obey, and I just wanna cause a little chaos and entropy. <laughs> was never warm silly ponies can't reform what was already so real so you can try to change my ways for the rest of all your days but i can't change the way i feel that was really cheesy did i get lost along the way lose my mind for a new identity i quite enjoy ruining your day and i just want to cause a little entropy you tried so hard to make a hero out of